Hello students. This is becoming a habit for me. Um, hopefully we'll get to stop it at the end of the week. But um, if you hear any sounds today, or right now, it's not a bird chirping. It's probably a, a grasshopper chirping. I'm back on my uh, back porch. Just a little bit quieter than normal. <clears throat> but in this uh, very short um, video, we're going to revisit this example for the, peer, the paired sample t-test, which is also called a dependent sample t-test, and show you that you don't really need SPSS to do these problems. You can do it by hand, um, like we showed in the first video. But also, and this may be something you guys enjoy, you also can do this using Excel. So you look at these Thursday and Friday numbers, right? You go to Excel, and I actually did it for you already, and type in Thursday in A column and Friday in B column. Then you can go to your Data Analysis Toolkit and click on the link that says T-Test Paired to Sample for Means. You click OK, and I actually have the data in here already, but yours starts off like this, okay? So if you wanted to know the variable one, you click your red thing, highlight Thursday, hit enter. Variable two, hit the red thing, highlight the B column, hit enter. The hypothesized difference is zero. So that means that I think that the difference, the mean different uh, the mean difference is zero. Okay. I could make the hypothesized difference 5 if I wanted to see if you increased by 5 points or more, say. But for our case, we're just looking whether or not the difference is greater than 0 or not equal to 0. So 0 is fine. I have this labels check because I included the words Thursday and Friday in my link. If I didn't have those there, I didn't have to check this. Alpha level, you can set that to 0 .05, 0 .01, 0 .10. And the last thing you need to do is click on the output range and choose a cell. In this case, I'll choose F2. Hit Enter. Okay. Once you have that plugged in, you hit OK or you hit Enter. And ta-da, there is your data. So what it gives you, what it gives you here is the mean for Thursday, mean for Friday, variance for Thursday, variance for Friday, it also gives you the Pearson correlation coefficient, which is 0 0.009, pretty much zero. Your hypothesized mean, your degrees of freedom, your t-test, your t-statistic, negative 2.41, as well as the one-tailed and two-tailed critical values. Okay. So if you want to compare that to your SPSS output, I still have it open for you. So you can go to SPSS, and I'm going to highlight this box right here, copy it, and go back to Excel, and paste it right here, and show you that we get the same information. So the mean, 68.125 and 69.875, I do not have that listed here, but you can look back at this box copy this and paste it here okay and look at what we have 69.88 if I took off a decimal here you get the same thing that you get here okay those are the same 68.13 that and that are the same okay 2.70, 1.55. We don't have those, but we do have the standard deviations. So if we were to square the standard deviations, for instance, if you did uh, equals this squared, you'd get something ugly like that. Um, probably shouldn't have did that. So let me let me get out of that. Let me edit undo that. The standard mean standard deviation is 1.246 this is broken up by 8 and what is this broken up by it really doesn't tell you 
Hmm. Let me look into that one because I wonder if it's doing the pooled variance. It's probably doing the pooled variance, but it shouldn't be different. Everything else is exactly the same, so I wonder what that's going, what's going on there. Observations eight. Observations eight. Those are fine. Degrees of freedom is seven. Degrees of freedom is seven. Everything looks the same. Okay. Negative two point four one one. That's because I put Thursday in, uh, in front of Friday. I'll change that to red. 2.411, you see that's red. This two-tailed test, 04669 something, you can read it here, is exactly the same as this. Okay. The difference is, with Excel, you actually have the T value as well. So it's telling you you can compare uh, 2.411 to 1.89 for a one-tail test or 2.36 for a two-tail test. So you actually get the t-table, the t-value in Excel, but you don't get it in SPSS. And you'll notice that the p-value for a one-tail test is exactly half of the p-value of the two-tail test. So if you're looking at just the SPSS version, you take this divided by two and you get your p-value for a one tail test. Okay? And everything else is, is pretty much the same. So there you go. You can look at your T value and your critical value and say, hey, that's bigger than that. I reject it. Or you can look at this 0.02 or this 0.047 and say, that's less than 0.05. I again reject it. Okay? So that's it for now. I'm going to actually stop this message um, so you can have a pretty short uh, a pretty short video and I'm going to find out why that variance gave me a different number than than what it should have since I just squared the standard deviation um, okay that's it have a good day see ya ah I think I might know H hold on for one second before you guys go if this doesn't work then I have no idea this squared uh, carrot 2 Ah, that's what happened. So the Thursday number is 1.642. When you square that, you get 2.696, which is this number, which is the same as this number. So I was just looking at the wrong thing. So for the 1.42, 1.246, I should say, if I square it this, I get 1.553, which is exactly what this variance says. Okay, so my, my common sense wasn't actually off. I'm just glad that I was able to figure it out. Hence, you have paired sample t-tests for Excel. The only problem with this is that it does not let you check your assumptions. So even if you use Excel to do the calculations, you need to justify that you're okay to use it in the first place by checking your assumptions. That's it. Have a good evening. It's 11.30 p.m. I'm going to sleep. See ya.